The Somerset Historical Center is southwestern Pennsylvania's Rural Heritage Museum. So we show rural life in this part of Pennsylvania from the earliest Native Americans up through to the present day farming community. A tour to the Somerset Historical Center would include our visitor center, which has a 12 minute orientation film called Patterns on the Land and various exhibits from the Native Americans through the military involvement through the area and the various stages of farming throughout the years. The outside tour at the Somerset Historical Center includes the Adam Miller Log Farmstead, which has a log house, summer kitchen, smokehouse, and log barn. We have an 1859 Waters Mill covered bridge, the Jacob Emmerich Cider Press, and a maple sugar camp as part of the outside tour. The Walters Mill covered bridge is one of 10 surviving covered bridges in Somerset County. It originally stood uh, outside the town of Somerset and was moved here to become part of our exhibits uh, sometime in the 1960s. The bridge itself was built in 1859. It replaced several previous bridges at that site. It is done in the multiple king post style. Around 1900, arches were added to strengthen the bridge against heavier usage from farm equipment and of course later on vehicle traffic that were utilizing that bridge. Pennsylvania ranks about fifth or sixth in the nation in the production of maple products. Somerset County developed into the largest producer of maple products in Pennsylvania, mainly because of several reasons. You need freezing cold nights and warm thawing days. That causes the, the atmospheric change in the tree and releases the maple sugar water to come out of the tree when you drill a hole into it to tap it. We also had a large number of maple trees and we had a large farm population. The maple season usually is in the springtime of the year. It can run any time from January through March. To produce maple products, it takes about 40 to 50 gallons of sugar water to produce one gallon of maple syrup. From that gallon of maple syrup, about seven to eight pounds of sugar can be produced. In the early days, they didn't have glass jars or tin cans to store the liquid syrup. So almost all of the maple products was stirred into sugar and stored in, in that form, either in granulated sugar or in cake form or brick form. The sugar water that runs from the tree is clear and colorless and virtually tasteless, maybe slightly sweet. And in order to make that syrup, you have to boil it or evaporate out the excess water. The earliest method of boiling was to use an iron kettle but it was a very slow and laborious process since the heating surface was so small. Eventually, they moved to a flat bottom pan about four to five feet in size, and you could boil a lot more sap a lot faster with that. That meant moving from outdoors into what we know as a maple sugar camp, which enclosed the firebox and the sugar pan and protected the sugar makers from the springtime weather of rain or snow or sleet. Today's maple sugar camps use evaporators, which are modern conveniences that have a lot of energy saving devices on them. At the historical center, we have a display of maple sugaring equipment, a video that shows the process from tapping to boiling and, and making sugar. We also have a reconstructed circa 1860s maple sugar camp that has a, a flat bottom pan made of Russia iron and some of the appliances and equipment used to produce maple sugar. Each spring in Somerset County, the Somerset County maple producers have a taste and tour program where you can visit the various maple sugar camps throughout the county. The historical center portrays the early history of maple sugaring, the lore and the history, and we also demonstrate how to make a Somerset County treat known as spotza. When the maple season rolled around, they would open up the maple sugar camp in the springtime by taking the wooden buckets that we call keelers here in Somerset County 
and scald them out with hot water. That would swell them up, make them watertight, and they would also use a wooden brush like this to scrub them out and get them nice and clean. Now, when they brought the sugar water back to the sugar camp, they would pour it into the long trough in the back of the camp, drain it from the trough down into the, the boiling pan in the front here made of Russia iron. This pan could boil about 25 gallons an hour and they would transfer it from the front pan to the kettle in the back. When it was syrup, they would let it settle out a bit and then take that syrup and reheat it to make sugar. Once the sugar water was boiled down into syrup, they would bring it over to the finishing kettle where they would cook it uh, to about 243 degrees and take the crane and swing it off and pour it into the wooden trough where it was stirred into sugar. About seven to eight pounds of sugar could be made from a gallon of maple syrup. The sugar could be stirred into granulated sugar or it could be made into molds or bricks. Farms in Somerset County started growing apples. Cider was kept as a beverage. They also made some other products uh, that helped on the farm. Um, they could take, press it into cider, uh, turn that into vinegar, which helped for food preservation like pickling. Um, they also made something called apple butter, which involves boiling the cider with um, sliced apples, and it makes an apple preserve. It was another way to keep the crop uh, through the lean winter months. So many farms grew apples, um, but Jacob Emmerich's press uh, was built large enough to be able to press a large amount of apples in a short amount of time. For farms to not need to keep such a large press at each farm, he built it to be able to handle his neighbors, friends and family within a, a day's drive. They could bring their apples, press it in a day, fill barrels and cart it off within that same day. Uh, Jacob Emmerich had a wide variety of skills that contributed to his ability to build the press. Uh, he was a wheelwright, a blacksmith, so he had the skills necessary uh, to be able to put that and make that a feature on his farm. Apples were preserved in four ways, by slicing them and drying them, and those are called apple snits in Somerset County. They could be uh, fermented into hard cider and also vinegar, and then they were also cooked uh, with apple slices and made into apple butter. The Jacob Emmerich Cider Press that's here on site is a large uh, commercial sized apple press. Um, it's one of the few remaining examples of that style in the nation. It is made almost entirely of wood and was brought here in 1999 to be part of our exhibits. The press was built sometime after 1886 and was operated up until the 1940s or 1950s. The press itself is massive. It's about 35, 34 feet long uh, and includes a large wooden beam that provides the weight and the pressing power to be able to squeeze the cider out of the apples. To demonstrate the operation of the press, we have a scale model. And um, you'll see here on the model, the wooden pressing beam at the top, the pressing table and supporting posts and levers here at this end. And the way the press operated, at the back of this wooden trough, we have a chute and a grinding wheel. And the apples were shoveled into that chute and ground up and filled this wooden trough with the ground and chipped and shaved apples. It is necessary to grind them up to be able to press the juice out of them. After the apples are ground, or while they're being ground, a wooden form was placed on the pressing table and aligned with a coarse burlap. And the ground apples were shoveled into that form. The corners of the burlap were folded over to create a cheese. The cheeses are then alternated with wooden slats and a stack of cheeses is placed up under this wooden pressing beam. It was then blocked up to make sure it was tight under that beam. And then this beam, which is about 3,000 pounds, was lowered to provide the downward force necessary to squeeze that cider out onto the pressing table. Now to raise and lower this beam, Jacob Emmerich used a system of three posts that had holes spaced out along the length of the post, and then there were metal pins 
And as you rock this lever back and forth, you can see how it's raising this pressing beam. And as they rocked it back and forth, they would gradually lower it by replacing the pins and the holes. And as the beam pressed down, all this weight comes down on this stack of cheeses. The cider would run out following the grooves of the pressing table into a collecting trough, which could then be used to fill the farmer's barrels and cart it off to be their year's supply of cider.